Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 20th of May. I hope you're all doing well and had a great uh, trading week and uh, if you like the analysis that I provide every Sunday, um, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow colleagues. And so yeah, getting into the week ahead. And um, 20th of May, we've got in the US, investors will be closely monitoring speeches by Federal Reserve officials, the FOMC meeting minutes and key economic indicators, including the S&P manufacturing and services, PMI, durable goods orders and new and existing home sales. Globally, attention will be on interest rate decisions in China and in New Zealand. Inflation rates will be released for Canada, the UK and Japan. Additionally, manufacturing and services PMI data will be published for Australia, Japan, Germany and the Euro area and the United Kingdom. Customer confidence figures will be reported for Australia, the UK and the Euro area, along with retail sales data for the UK and Canada and trade balance for the Euro area and Japan. So lots going on uh, this week. I think really the standouts in terms of uh, data will be uh, manufacturing and services PMI for the for the uh, US. Um, you've uh, got interest rate decisions uh, for New Zealand and inflation rates for the uh, for Canada, the UK and Japan. I guess services PMI for Australia and Japan as well in the euro area and the UK will also be uh, quite important. So let's see what happens um, uh, this week with the data. So uh, before we get into the weekly analysis, just going over some trade analysis and some uh, some trades that I've uh, taken over the past uh, couple of weeks. And first, starting off on the dollar Swiss, and the, and the dollar Swiss was a uh, stop hunt trade um, that was located within this uh, daily uh, demand zone. And in fact, uh, demand zone started from here, so it just kind of broke beyond the demand zone and uh, came back inside. And so. Um, my entry was at the 0.902s around there with a stop loss around the 89.75s. Uh, and um, this trade is now a uh, break even trade. Uh, it's taken profit off at a, um, taken partial profits off 50% off at a one to one. So I do have 50% uh, off. Um, so I can't lose from here if prices do come back, but I do expect prices to, you know, move to the upside as the Swiss franc and the Swiss National Bank are looking to continue to cut rates um, and the uh, Federal Reserve are looking to cut rates uh, in September, which we'll get into uh, a bit later. So there's a quite a big divergence in monetary policy currently. And so I do expect prices to continue to move to the upside, although who knows. Um, but there is a level here that could, you know, it's a bit of a trouble level where we've had resistance several times. So that could stop this trade from going a bit higher, maybe in the short term. But overall, I do expect prices to move to the upside as long as obviously data supports, uh, you know, the, uh, the dollar holding until uh, September. Um, the uh, the second trade was euro dollar and the euro dollar. Um, I did actually end up losing um, a trade on this. I took two trades, and so uh, the first trade I took, uh, I entered in uh, at about the zero point, uh, sorry, one point zero eight three five area. And I had my stop up around the 81.088, which I ended up getting spiked out by maybe about five or six pips or so. Um, so I lost uh, about three positions on there, but managed to get back inside on the trade uh, around this level here. So that was where the uh, 108.70 bores my stop loss was somewhere around there. One second, yeah, it's about yeah, about eleven pips above the high, <clears throat> and this 
ended up being actually um, a uh, profitable trade. But I've taken, again, 50% profits off of this trade so that now I'm at break even and I'm swing trading the rest. Unfortunately, I haven't managed to get involved. Price didn't pull back enough for me to get into multiple positions on this. So I'm only in one position at the moment and hoping that this starts to at least roll over uh, to the downside where, you know, 108s, maybe 1079s, where I might look to take the rest of the, uh, the profit somewhere around here. And finally, the Euro British pound has been um, a good trade, managed to get in on two positions, took one position off at a one to one, um, which was around this area. Actually, my average is a bit, a bit higher than that because basically I got in, it was around here and um, three entries. So it was the eight hour, one second. Yeah, that was it. So it was there. And then one position was at the close of the candle. The other position was really around here. So um, as price spiked up, so I've got in a 50% retracement, didn't manage to get the third position in, but um, that position ended up making a one-to-one. -one. And then I have another position which has run further down. And so that at the moment is about two uh, point one eight to one. My final target is around eighty percent of the of the uh, of the range between that low and that high, and so um, nearly there, nearly there. Hopefully, it does start to move to the downside. So you downside. So I'm around about six pips, seven pips away from uh, reaching the target. So I've moved my stop down now as well. To break even so I can't lose on this uh, position either so hopefully we can get some nice uh, follow through before the uh, the UK data comes out which is inflation uh, year on year so let's see what happens there so those are really uh, the trades as well as um, taking profit matter of fact on gold so uh, this is the trade that I didn't necessarily um, <clears throat> don't know if I spoke about this a couple of weeks ago but I ended up taking profit on, I think it was Thursday, and then going into Friday, it actually went higher. So um, I'm okay with taking profits around here, uh, which was fine. And the entry was um, around, yeah, Friday, the uh, the 3rd of May at around the 2300. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's been a decent trade as well. So, um, so yeah. Uh, loss on the euro, but the rest have been uh, decent trades so far. So those are really the updates. And um, yeah, let's see what happens next week. Uh, so getting into now the uh, the weekly analysis and starting off on the dollar index. And this is an equally weighted dollar index chart. So it's not the DXY or the USDX. Uh, I'll link the video to the US uh, D uh, equally weighted index at the top right hand side of the screen and you can basically watch that video and uh, understand why I use the equally weighted index rather than the dollar index or the USDX. But ultimately, um, when it comes to the fundamentals, I do think that the dollar may want to hold up better than expected. Now, we could see a little bit more downside as the market does start to price in September rate cuts. But I think overall, because they are one of the last uh, central banks outside of the Australian dollar and the New, and the New Zealand dollar, um, they should it, that should really kind of support the uh, the dollar um at least over the medium term, but let's see what happens. Um, I'm still probably a bit more bullish on the dollar, but uh, I understand why traders would look for, uh, or uh, maybe might look for sell trades in the short term. And so again, last week we did have uh, some news that came out and this is the uh, from the Discord channel um, uh, that I run the private mentoring channel and in the United States fundamental channel uh, that the headlines really from Bloomberg was that a measure of underlying inflation 
called in April for the first time in six months in a small step in the right direction for Federal Reserve officials looking to start cutting rates this year. So um, the market started pricing in uh, rate cuts in September, which should uh, devalue the currency. And it says here that Treasury yields tumbled, S&P 500 index futures rose, and the dollar weakened. Traders boosted the odds of a September rate cut to about 60%. And so you see that pretty much on the uh, FedWatch tool. And if you go to September, it does look like the an ease is now about 64% with a no change at 35%. So the to the more that an ease gets increased and priced in is the weaker the dollar will um you know will be and will go but um i don't you know i think that it's um it's, the downside is probably a bit more limited now where the dollar starts to become a lot more devalued and depreciated is if you know you start to have rate cuts priced in for july and july's rate cuts at the moment uh are 29% chance of an ease. So if that starts to increase as well with data coming out that supports uh, a rate cut, which is, you know, a fall, I guess, in inflation or below forecast, then um, then you're likely to see the dollar continue to sell off. But I think as long as um, September is the, um, the most likely uh, month for rate cuts before the election, I do think that the dollar may um, not necessarily sell off as much as uh, people expect in terms of price wise. So, um, yeah, that's where I am with the dollar. So I think any pullbacks are nice buying opportunities for now, as long as the data supports it. And we are technically at quite a decent level as well within that demand zone. We've got nice support and resistance. And so, uh, so yeah, I think now is a nice time to look for some buy trades on the dollar um, in terms of not necessarily the dollar index, but you know the dollar, any dollar crosses. Um, looking at the dollar yen and the dollar yen um, coming down to a level, or not actually, yeah, just just about touched the level of demand from um, a couple of weeks ago. We have got a pullback, and yeah, prices came in, and again with the carry trade still really being the uh, the dominant theme with the dollar yen um you know the, uh, the 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 path of this resistance should continue to be more to the upside the bank of japan didn't get great news um when it comes to the economy and the economy from again from bloomberg says that the boj you know can't ignore these numbers and basically the numbers they're talking about was the fact that we had a shrinking economy so uh shrinking economy japan's gdp contracted for the first three months of 2024 so not great news and so here it says um this is not at all the kind of situation where they can raise rates again right away, says Nobiyasu Atago, chief economist at Rakuten Securities Economic Research Institute. I don't think they can move in July. They will have to wait for a second quarter GDP data to come out in August. So raising rates typically has the effect of contracting the economy. And if the economy is already contracting, um, and in a negative, a negative growth, then it's unlikely that the Bank of Japan um, will look to high rates, right? And so um, it says here, many economists expect the BOJ to move again later this year. They forecast an economic rebound in the quarter through June as auto output recovery recovers, sorry, and the wage hikes lift consumer sentiment. Many families will also receive one-off tax cuts starting in June. But um, again, the GDP wasn't great. So um, I do think at the moment there is some negative sentiment still lingering for the uh, for the yen. And so I think any pullbacks are buying opportunities for the dollar yen. Uh, the dollar CAD, dollar CAD um, is worth a buy, I think. Uh, the Bank of Canada are looking to cut ahead of the Federal Reserve. So again, the path of these resistance should still be towards the upside. If you are looking for a demand zone, um, maybe a bit more of a pullback into this zone will be quite nice 
for a uh, buy trade. So, yeah, the dollar CAD for me is uh, looking like more of a buy than a sell. If you are looking for short trades, I think the nearest uh, supply zone is going to have to be up into this uh, level of um, supply here. But I think you really probably want to see... Um, yeah, move maybe up into these highs up at the one three sevens. Although it does start down here, I think towards the highs of the is the uh, level you want to see because you've got lower highs and lower lows being made. Lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. So you want to look for a pullback up into somewhere around these lower highs before looking at going uh, short on the uh, dollar CAD, but. I think the path of these resistance is more to the upside. So that's where we are with the dollar CAD, pound, dollar. Um, again, the pound this week uh, does have some um, some inflation news, which is going to really kind of decide where, you know, the Bank of England are really going to cut or whether the Bank of England are going to cut in July or they're going to cut in August. If it looks like they're cutting in August, then you could actually see a bit more upside um, in this pair. If it does look like they're cutting in June, then um, I said July before, sorry, I meant to say June, June or August. If they look like they're cutting in June, then actually, in fact, you will have or you're likely to have prices actually sell off. So the, the day you're looking towards is. Um, is going to be Wednesday. So Wednesday, the lead up to Wednesday is going to be very interesting as to whether you want to be a buyer or the seller of the pound and what inflation is really saying. So, um, yeah, decent uh, level to look to position short before the news. But if you do want to wait until after the news, that's also um, a decent uh, uh, shout as well in terms of, um, you know, just understanding that um it's riskier to take trades, obviously, before news. But if you want more confirmation, then fine, excellent. But just remember as well, you'll be trading after the news and the risk reward is going to likely to be less by the time you get into uh, the trade. So there's always pros and cons with uh, trading before or after the news. But if you do want to be a buyer of the US dollar, I do actually think that there is a hidden demand starting from there as well. Also, you do have a level of support and resistance within that level as well yeah so i think the start of this zone uh up into uh, or down into the 1.255s is where you want to look to probably look to position yourself long or just deeper down into the 125s 12450s looking at the pound yen and again the pound yen has gone from strength to strength based off of interest rate divergences and although the yen are hiking rates and the pound and the bank of england are looking to cut rates i think the carry trade um is is really uh the dominant theme uh for now when it comes to the yen so um the carry trade just basically being uh buying the uh, the, the, the currency with a higher interest rate and so um I do think any pullbacks down into the one nine fives could be a decent area to look for some longs or you're looking at this area right here when it comes to uh, a buy. But that's a good maybe what's that five, six hundred pips to the downside. I'm not too sure whether it will come down there anytime soon. So any buy trades around here, if you're an intraday trader, is decent for a, uh, a long. Uh, looking at the euro dollar. And I do think the euro dollar should want to uh, roll over a little bit at least i'm not expecting it to you know maybe make all the, go all the way down to these lows or anything like that but at least probably down to uh, maybe the 107s <clears throat> potentially uh but if you are looking at short trades now i think now's a decent time to look for some short trades um the euro um uh, uh in terms of the ecb uh, they're still looking to um, to cut rates, and it says here that the European Central Bank is very likely to start cutting rates at its next policy meeting in June. Bank of France Governor Francois Villeroy de Carreau said, and he says, uh, as we have sufficient confidence, we will very probably begin cutting central bank rates, doubtless at our meet meeting at the start of June. Villeroy said. 
His comments reflect consensus, even if some more hawkish ECB policymakers have urged greater caution on cutting rates after a first move in June. Backing such views are a persistence in the euro area salary gains and uncertainty in energy markets caused by the situation in the Middle East. Stronger growth in the eurozone economy may also make policy easing less urgent and other ECB officials on Wednesday also back to first reduction uh, in rates in June. So June looks like the uh, the rate cut, but where the euro may strengthen is if further rate uh, cuts are priced out of the market. And that is actually a, a possibility that could happen. So um, the euro tends to rise, obviously, just like every other currency. Um, with central bank policy, but also it's a bit more sensitive to uh, dollar moves. So the euro can rise even just off of some dollar weakness, right? So um, I do think that the do- that the euro um, uh, should want to roll over, but if it if it moves to the upside, it's really more based on I think uh, dollar weakness rather than euro uh, out and out euro strength. So. Let's see what happens here. If you do want to start to look for short trades now, uh, now is a decent area. If you're waiting for maybe a move up to uh, some some decent highs, I think some areas here are quite uh, decent for a trade, especially the maybe the highs of this uh, supply zone around the one tens. Yeah, so the one ten round number, which is going to be just above this uh, this supply zone. Actually, in fact, if we include that as supply, then it, it comes in within that supply zone. So the one tens. Do look nice as well for a short, and I do. I do think that the uh, euro strength, any euro strength, is going to be capped. Um, should be capped around this area anyway. So nice uh, short trades if you are looking for long trades on the euro dollar and betting on some dollar weakness and the euro strength. Then you have a pullback really down to these uh, these zones around here before looking at going uh, long on the euro dollar. Uh, euro. Yen, so euro yen again. Um, the higher interest rate at the moment is is winning, and so the uh, any pullbacks on this, I think the nearest demand zone has to be all the way down into these one six fives, one six fours, unless prices make higher highs, something like this. Then you wait for a pullback into a um, demand zone, which would be somewhere around here before looking at going long in that area but until you know that happens really the you know you'd have to wait for kind of like a pullback so those are really your options if you're looking to buy the euro versus the yen if you're looking to buy the yen then i think anywhere from now should be decent for a short although you don't really have much of a reference when you think about you know the uh the historical levels of resistance so um just be mindful that you are shorting without much confluence although this is an Quite a nice uh, supply zone, nice hard in, hard out. Let's see what happens. Obviously, the uh, Bank of Japan are defending certain levels still intervention. So could that be, again, another level where they may want to defend if prices, you know, go somewhere around here? So um, that's something to consider. Uh, Euro pound. Again, I think uh, with the pound still, I think currently... um, Oh, well, hopefully they're looking to cut in August. And again, depending on what happens with the data, with the inflation data this week. But if they are continuing to cut in August, then we should see more downside in the euro pound. If they if data comes out this week and is uh, not supportive of that and inflation comes in a lot lower than expected, then, you know, if prices are in this demand zone, then I do think that we could see, in fact, a um a move to the upside right something like that so um so let's see what happens with the euro pound uh this week and i think it's this is definitely be driven by more what the, the bank of england decide and the, and the uh the uh the pound data uh australian dollar us dollar uh the australian dollar again uh, expected to cut later than the uh, federal reserve the rba is seeing this now play out in the markets, in fact, that's where we've got some hidden supply. So I'd probably say the first area to look for uh, some trades is going to be, you know, pull back into this zone here before going long. Um, 
uh, not a pair that I'm really interested in trading though at the moment. Uh, I think I'd rather get involved in this once we do have a, the, the the Federal Reserve start their cutting cycle. So let's see what happens with that. If you are looking to short the uh, the Australian dollar, US dollar, I do think now is a very nice uh, level to look for some short trades uh, at this 67 uh, round number area. And finally, gold. So gold, I'm out of this trade now. Um, even though prices have moved higher, I'm going to look to get back in. Uh, on a pullback so not necessarily the first pullback that happens maybe somewhere around the uh, one two uh, sorry the two three sixes to two three twos also as well we do have a nice area of uh, support and resistance in that area so that's nice i think this uh anything to i think these are past all-time highs now so um i do think that we do have a nice demand zone and some support in here has been traded around here and here. So for me, the be the better trade, the better value is going to be down into these zones here. You could look for some intraday trades around here, but it's not really my, uh, I don't really want to buy it high. So I'm looking for a deep pullback if we can get one. If prices do make, you know, continue to make higher highs, then this becomes more of a bargain. And then I'll be more inclined to look for, uh, a trade around here but for now i think that you know buying around this demand zone where you've got you know the, the two three eight sixes the two three seven ones is a bit too expensive for my liking um you know gold overall should really be a buy uh heading into september um and the rate cutting cycle so um as central banks start to cut rates gold should want to move to the upside how it moves to the upside whether it goes straight up whether it has deeper pullbacks, um, you know, it, uh, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, the path of these resistance should continue to the upside over the medium to long term. So let's see what happens with that. If you are looking for short trades, though, short trades, meaning that you want to be a buyer of the uh, potentially buyer of the dollar, um, then actually these highs are really nice technically. But um, I would personally stay away from um, uh, shorting gold, even if gold comes down. Um, that's fine, you know, but at the end of the day, was it the smartest trade um, to take, you know, ahead of, uh, you know, the, the rate cutting cycle? So I'm just waiting for pullbacks and then looking for long trades on gold. Anyways, guys, that's it for now. I hope you uh, enjoyed the analysis. Uh, take care and hope you have a great trading week.